slowly tarnished. Playing as a lord. I command thee now! Welcome to Elden Ring, everyone. Now, it's officially been over a month since its release, but I am still experiencing new things in the game just about every day. Keep in mind that I am hundreds of hours into the game at this point, so to say that this is a rare occasion would be an understatement. But honestly, for that reason, I feel obligated to keep this review as spoiler-free as possible as I feel like new players deserve to experience this game to its full extent. The way I want to approach this review is to split it up to certain chapters because I think certain gameplay mechanics are more important than others. The first being the open world of the game. I feel as though this is the most important to talk about, as I have the most to say about it and it's the most unique thing about the experience. Secondly would be gameplay. Because it's very similar to the previous From games, but it isn't the same. I also want to talk about the content of the game, as I feel like this is what's going to contribute the longevity that we've so desperately awaited, especially in the From community. Next I want to talk about antagonists, as the bosses are pretty important in the game. And finally I want to talk about the music, as I feel it's one of the more important aspect of aesthetic when coming to these games and it ties very well into the open world. So with that, let's get into this Elden Ring review. Yeah, I love this game. Within the first few minutes of the game you put in this somewhat cold, empty and disturbing environment. A place that can give you a similar feeling that's very reminiscent of Dark Souls 3. However, this somewhat misguided impression is swiftly washed away as you open the gate to Limgrave. This is objectively the best open world in gaming history. There's just no other open world that comes to mind when you consider the sheer density and verticality of this world. Every corner of the map is memorable in its own right. And even at the most obscure corners of the world, you're met with handcrafted encounters and significant content. Even with a lifetime of experience at my belt, I've continuously been impressed at each playthrough of the game. Not even that, but when met with a dungeon, a means to isolate yourself from this open world, you're consistently engaged with your environment with more ways than just physical. Before its release, we were all informed of legacy dungeons, which were meant to be more significant than others. At the end of the game, you are not able to identify any of these dungeons at all. The best way I can explain this is when you first arrive at Blackreach in Skyrim. The feeling you got from this walking through that door is revisited a grand total of six times in Elden Ring. This revelation is just unheard of, and I'd gladly revisit it time and time again. If you gave me a single word to describe the gameplay of Elden Ring, I'd return with the phrase diversity near instantaneously. The game allows you to pick up practically anything and make it viable. But viable isn't even where the bar is set. It is set to be fun, and so the heights of satisfactions are near immeasurable. Now I'd be lying if I said there aren't builds more beneficial than others. But what's certain is the enjoyability. 
Elden Ring explores so much more than just katanas and greatswords. Just about every piece of weaponry has a meta, which can be promptly pursued with the right distribution of stats. That in and of itself is almost bizarre to me, as I could never imagine using anything else besides a strong or aesthetically pleasing weapon. However, the very notion of holding something subpar whilst dealing immense amounts of damage causes a near indescribable feeling of joy. Last year I did something similar to this by beating Dark Souls 3 with only miracles. And the feeling of beating down a couple bosses with a chime didn't exactly make me feel good. What's plausible is that it couldn't make me feel good. However, Elden Ring has developed not just one, but several exceptions to this rule. And for that I'd gladly overlook the balancing issues at hand, which I am confident are being developed as we speak. I'll jump the gun on this one, and say that they missed the mark on this one. By that I mean we don't have a lack of neither quality or quantity, but rather features with unreleased potential. This game offers a lot, yes, but a lot of the quality comes at the expense of their new features, that being Ashes of War and Crafting, whereas Gimmick Weapons has a noticeable edge over the latter. This poses a few issues in my mind. The first being originality. The purpose of these features were to introduce diversity, and although that particular goal was undoubtedly reached, I feel as though the strength is severely lacking for the effort that you put in. This does not tie in with the overall experience, as the discovery of how mediocre this can be subconsciously prevent any further developments, which is a massive shame considering the amount of potential these features have. That said, the array of balanced content is not lacking in the slightest. Each individual discovery garner curiosity and it more often than not satiates your expectations. Whether you're wielding or casting, there is always a viable alternative to the status quo, and that will always leave you with a great deal of satisfaction. So although these features don't live up to the expectations, it's fair to consider it the byproduct of the incredible standard set by the main content of the game. Wow, I just have so much to say. Everything from the lore to the enemy design has just had an inconceivable amount of attention and care. One of the more conspicuous enhancements made in Elden Ring is the graphics, yet I don't feel people express enough about it. Personally, I can contribute to about 90% of the boss fights with this. They explore just about every gradient of color and contrast with their antagonists. This unfamiliarity is what makes Elden Ring so vastly different from other games in the Soul series, and the ties it has with our human curiosity is taken fully advantage of. Obviously the standalone main bosses are masterful as always, but sometimes you'll encounter several bosses that share the same appearance. But each time you do, you're mixed up in a completely different situation. So what does this do? Well, the fight itself becomes an entirely different mechanically and visually. I sometimes found myself with an entirely different opinion of a boss when fighting it again, as either the arena, moveset, weapons or whatever had the standout difference gave me an entirely new impression of the boss. I almost found myself in awe of a fight I had already had, because although I knew it would likely fail, each and every time the mix-up would make the encounter memorable. This is extremely difficult to do, but they've somehow managed to reuse assets in an engaging way. 
However, it's not without its flaws. For one, I won't mention who this is, but there seems to have been a twisted sense of priority when making enemy variations. All I'm going to say is that if you know, you know, because there are a few main bosses that share a similar appearance to the side quest bosses. Initially, you can't help but be wasted with this sense of disappointment. But as mentioned earlier, these fights are always developed in such a way to feel like a standalone experience. But honestly, with the near perfection they've already managed to achieve, I would rather wait another month or two just to have a standalone experience. Because as impressive as it's been, it's just subconsciously disappointing. And it's even more annoying when you consider the amazing statistics tied with the Elden Ring wiki, which states that there are a grand total of 8 out of 120 boss fights, which are identical. Not just that, but the enemy placements are just not used to their full extent in later sections of the game. A lot of space suggests for a lot of epic encounters, and when you walk into the space you're somewhat greeted with a disappointing enemy type that feels out of place in the environment. All in all, I just wish From took the time to completely perfect the game considering how thorough they've been with the game already. There are also a few missed opportunities that just seem to be obvious to the player. 90% of the time you'll overlook these things, but you cannot help to think about it in the time after the experience, and it personally just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. From Software has always delivered the high octane musical scores for their action. For God's sake, they fill up entire theaters with a choir to make their music. So it's safe to say that in terms of quality, they have the utmost peak OSTs in the gaming industry. However, as high as these peaks are, From has had a new issue to tackle this time around, that being the music of the Commonwealth. Their solution was to create the soundtracks for each of the major areas of the game as well as that area's respective legacy dungeon. Unfortunately, this didn't work out in my opinion. The world is simply way too vast to contain the same soundtrack for what could be hours on end. Yes, I know. There are several variations of combat musics that activate when you get into an encounter. But this just simply isn't enough, even though I appreciate the sentiment. I genuinely believe that the better solution would be to either make a legendary soundtrack for the entirety of the open world, or to split each area into segments, and make segments for each of these soundtracks. It honestly kept me from exploring certain areas of the game, because some of the soundtracks were borderline annoying when you were caught in that location. It also makes certain actions in this place a lot more tedious than it has to be. A good example that a lot of experienced players will recognize is the most efficient early game farming spot. It has an initial impact that you're looking for, but it just simply doesn't age well. And if I'm being brutally honest, this just isn't Prompt's best work. There are only about 4 or 5 soundtracks that are really good and get your blood pumping. A lot of the others simply aren't memorable enough, although they do the job. All in all though, it's pretty good for what it's worth. So now, what's the verdict might you ask? Well I've decided to make this very simple for you. The open world is a 10 out of 10, simply the best I've ever been in. The gameplay is a 9.5 out of 10. 
Because the glaring balancing issues are completely overshadowed by how fucking badass you feel in practice. The content is a 9 out of 10, because I don't want to give a point to a system that feels out of place. The antagonists are a 9.2 out of 10, because I'm petty and I want to remove points for each boss that they've reused. And finally, the music is an 8.6 out of 10. The highs are way too high and the lows make you borderline dismissive. Well, that's it for now. Thank you all very much for watching and I hope you pick up this fucking amazing game already. Bye bye!